Part two of FAFSA verification. So in my previous video, we talked about what FAFSA verification is and how we can go about it, making sure that we can knock it out so we can move on with our lives, at least until next year. This video, we want to get more specific into a type of FAFSA verification, and that is asset verification. Now make sure you hit subscribe because every week we release a new strategy to help your family work towards a debt-free degree rather than one that buries your student in decades of student loan debt. Hey there, my name is Jocelyn Pearson, founder of the Scholarship System and Debt for Degree Lab, and that is what we do. We have taught strategies for now a decade and helped families secure almost $13 million in scholarships to date. <music> Now, FAFSA is a thorn in all of our sides, but when we finally submit it and we are so relieved and waiting for our financial aid letter, it might not come. And that's because our family has been chosen for FAFSA verification. Now, like I mentioned in the previous video, nearly a third of families are chosen for this. So don't take it personal. Many times it's just random luck of the draw, although sometimes it's actually based on seeing discrepancies. If you missed the previous video, you can check it out in our FAFSA playlist. We'll link to that in the description. Check it out after this video. Now, the thing with FAFSA ver verification is that sometimes parents do consider fudging the numbers to show less money so that they can possibly receive more money from the university. We never, ever, ever, ever want to do this. Assets are supposed to be reported at the time of submitting FAFSA. So while the tax information is from prior prior year, our asset information is from the moment that we are submitting FAFSA. Now, actually in our sister program, Debt Free Degree Lab, we have dozens of strategies regarding FAFSA. One of them is how to legally affect the results, including reducing assets. We only open up the doors to that two times a year. So if you wanna learn more, you can go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash waitlist. But again, it, it, we never want to purposely mislead it, you'll probably get caught. Now that said, of course, minor errors on your FAFSA, uh, that it could be understandable, but we really want to avoid any kind of big discrepancies. Now, just to reiterate the importance of this, the reasons we want to make sure that we are submitting it accurately and making sure that we are not causing any kind of discrepancies is because first and foremost, this can cause a delay in your student's financial aid. And depending on what state they're going to school in, some states can actually run out of money based on if your student submitted FAFSA too late. Now, even if you submitted it, it's not officially completed and finalized until you get that financial aid letter that student aid report really from the FAFSA. So if we're going through the verification process, then we're not done yet, right? We're not considered submitted. So as time passes, they're giving out money to other students. Again, this is not to stress you out, it's just to show you we want to make sure we're following the rules. Also, if we have major discrepancies, they could possibly have to pay money back. That's if this is discovered after money has been dispersed. And lastly, if caught purposely doing this, you can face serious consequences. In fact, the Higher Education Act of 1965 allows up to $20,000 in fines and even up to five years in jail. Who knew FAFSA was so serious, right? But again, sometimes FAFSA verification isn't because of a discrepancy, it's just because of luck of the draw. So again, don't panic. I just want you to understand the severity of getting this done in time. Okay, so when we're going through FAFSA verification, and going through asset verification, this is going to be through the universities. So when we're talking about how does FAFSA verify assets, it's actually through the universities because that's the only way they can manage this. This will mainly consist of uploading documents that can show bank balances or maybe W-2s or maybe tax information. It really depends on what they want to see. A lot of times this will be required for not just the parents, but the student as well. Now, again, there's no way of knowing if your family is going to be flagged for asset verification, but if you are, then what we would expect is your student would not get their SAR, their student aid report, right away. And then if there's a delay, you can expect either a message from the university through the portal or through email, or they may send a physical letter to your family. With that, they should detail the process of submitting the information they require. They should also list out any kind of requirements, like I mentioned earlier, whether they want copies of bank statements, showing balances, or maybe a copy of 
tax returns, whatever it is that they want to verify. There should also be a deadline. So we wanna make sure that we get it submitted as soon as possible, but at the very least, we have to make sure that it's submitted prior to that deadline. Okay, so now, regardless of how long this takes, one of the things that I always wanna say is that this doesn't halt the process totally when it comes to paying for college. In the meantime, make sure your student is applying to scholarships. We have a six step process all about applying to scholarships. I have a free webinar you can attend. Go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash free training, or you can go to the link in the bio Check that out because that'll get your student on the move when it comes to applying with scholarships while you handle this asset verification. Now, comment below, were you chosen for asset verification? Was this helpful? And did you realize how serious it could be if we fudge the numbers on FAFSA? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so that said, FAFSA is a great opportunity for families that can open up the doors to thousands of dollars of debt-free money or loans, but with the best terms. So we always want to submit FAFSA. We just sometimes have to jump through a few hoops to get it finalized. And that would be FAFSA verification. But if we're selected for it, it's not that big of a deal. We just have to follow the process and make sure we do it on time. All right. That said, hit subscribe because we have tons of strategies beyond FAFSA to help your families pay for college and make sure that you check out that free training in the description all about applying for scholarships. I'll see you in the next video.